Hello everybody, we're back. It's Jeremy Senpai, and I am giving you my very first podcast of 2024. Sorry, I kind of need to take a bit of a break, kind of need to uh, kind of need to deal with some personal stuff, but we're back now. It is February. It is the month of love. And you know what? I decided that every Friday I have four specific videos all based around Valentine's Day, or at the very least, Valentine's Day themed episodes. And I decided to start, of course, with the one that's always a safe bet to talk about. Hey Arnold, Arnold's Valentine. Like I said, almost every episode of Hey Arnold is worth talking about. Granted, some of the later ones are a bit iffy, but as far as we know when it comes to these holiday specials, there is a lot to talk about. Okay, now some context here. Arnold's Valentine opens up with Miss Lovac's class. We have everybody preparing for Valentine's Day, making Valentines, among other things. Now Arnold is making his own for his crush, Ruth McDougal. Now for those of you unaware, Ruth McDougal, she is a sixth grader. She is older than Arnold. Arnold is nine to ten years old, while Ruth is probably eleven to twelve. And all throughout season one, Arnold has had a massive, almost obvious crush on Ruth. However, what's actually very interesting is that even though Arnold does have a crush on Ruth, they have never interacted one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, Arnold has fantasized about her. He has imagined himself talking to her or her being impressed by him. But the two of them have never had a one-on-one -on -one interaction. In fact, as far as we know, or from what we've seen, Ruth has never actually spoken to Arnold. Okay, that context is over with. Now we'll move on to the main crooks of the story. Helga is trying to figure out how to express her Valentine to Arnold until finally she draws a blank. Arnold, of course, makes his Valentine out to Ruth and makes it out anonymously to surprise her. Okay, and then Miss Slovak announces that everybody got their letters back from their pen pals. Uh, Helga gets a rather sorry letter from... Uh, from her pen pal, who basically just tells her to send money. However, Miss Slovak does tell Helga that the most beautiful gifts come in the most plain of packages. And even though Helga doesn't think much of it at the time, this will come into play later, so just keep that in mind. While, he while Arnold gets a letter from his pen pal in Paris, Cecile. And keep that in mind too, because it does come into play later. Helga is stressed out because she wants to express how much she loves and appreciates Arnold, but of course, as a running theme, she is deathly afraid to do so. Then she gets a brilliant idea. She manages to get a hold of Arnold's uh, pen pal letter from Cecile and rewrites it so that Cecile is coming to visit Arnold for one night only. But it's also worth noting that we discover later on that the real Cecile, along with her parents, are coming to visit Arnold as a surprise visit. Granted, I don't know if she's only there for Valentine's Day or, or she's staying longer. I'm assuming that she's staying longer because you don't travel to another country just to spend one night. That's, that's kind of insane when you think about it, especially when you're going to visit somebody that, you've owned, that you haven't met yet. So yeah, it's a safe assumption that Cecile is there, is there to visit, uh, is there to visit the city that Arnold has wrote to her about. But she's obviously there partially see Arnold and see the city that he wrote about. But no way she's only gonna be there for a day or two. She's probably gonna be there for a lot longer. Just something small I figured I would add right there. Okay, moving along. Moving along. We see Arnold and Gerald at school, and Arnold is expressing to Gerald how he wants to confess his love to Ruth. Basically, he invited her to, to a restaurant for Valentine's Day night, where he intends to surprise her. 
And Gerald even makes a very mature statement with Arnold. What does Arnold like about Ruth? Yes, Arnold goes on to express how he finds her attractive. He likes her hair, he likes her eyes, but then Gerald rebuffs a bit, asking Arnold what does he like about her as a person. And very interestingly, Arnold even says that he doesn't know. This is very, very revealing, because this basically says to us and even Arnold and Gerald, Arnold has never had any one-on-one -on -one time with Ruth. Like I said earlier, these two have never been shown interacting together. These two... These two have never had any one-on-one -on -one time together. Yes, we've seen plenty of scenes where Arnold tries to... where he imagines wooing Ruth over, he imagines her being impressed by him, but as far as we know, all of that is just on Arnold's side of it. And I'll talk more about that a bit later. It's not until a bit later that uh, Arnold does go into a bit. It's not until just a bit later when Arnold and Gerald have a conversation in Arnold's room. Arnold reveals to Gerald that one day on the bus, he saw Ruth offer her seat to an old woman struggling to carry a watermelon. And he says it with such emotion, such sincerity, showing that there is a bit more to Ruth than just, than just physical attractiveness, showing that she can be a compassionate, mindful person. And, and while all this is going on, Helga is preparing herself to be her Cecile persona. She, she goes to a, she goes to a, a dog salon and gives herself a poodle look. I mean, she didn't really complain. She's very unrecognizable. She listens to a few tapes. Um, basically going into the Cecile persona. Uh, later, or by this point in the story, Arnold is aware that Cecile is coming to visit, so he kind of arranges an unknowing double date. Um, for example, he'll meet uh, Ruth and Cecile in different restaurants, one in Chez Paris, one in Chez uh, Paris, uh, Chez Paris, uh, and and as a coincidence would have it, both of these restaurants with very similar sounding names are right across the street from each other. <laughs> And this is actually a bit of a running gag. This uh, whole thing did come up later in a later episode, uh, Helga's Dinner for Four episode. I think that's the official name, but anyway. I do think that's kind of funny that these two restaurants have uh, similar sounding names, and they are across the street from each other. So it's kind of a nice little in-joke or running gag. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> um... Arnold does meet with Cecile, who's really Helga, and Helga does go into a bit to show herself that she is a very different person. She kind of lays down subtle hints, kind of trying to show Arnold her best self without blatantly saying, it's me, Helga, and I'm trying to let you know I can be decent to you, I can be good to you. And while Arnold is... And while Arnold is... Um, Tending to Cecile, Ruth appears. Ruth appears at the other restaurant across across the street, where Arnold has a clear view through the window. He wa he runs over and introduces himself, and Ruth kind of and Ruth kind of unknowingly is talking to her anonymous writer. For uh, Arnold does tell her th that uh, he is kind of anonymous or something like, oh, you know anonymous? And Ruth literally says, yeah, every time we have a poem in class, it's always by that famous guy, anonymous. This is a bit of a red flag right there. It does show that uh, Ruth, despite being older than Arnold, she's not that intelligent when you really think about it. Um, I even looked her up a bit on the wiki, on the Hey Arnold Nickelodeon wiki in preparation for this video, and she is described as being a bit stuck up, a bit callous, a bit um, shallow. 
and it's also worth noting that the entire time that Arnold and Ruth are interacting together, Ruth actually thinks that Arnold is the bus boy. She doesn't think that he's her date. Arnold literally runs across the street back to the other restaurant to talk with Cecile, and Ruth kind of nonchalantly just tells Arnold uh, when he comes back later now that when Anonymous shows up, he's going to have to go away. It never clicks in her head that Arnold is the guy who sent the letter. You could make an argument that she's just not that socially aware, or she's kind of self-centered. And the entire time that this is going on, Arnold is actually hitting it off, is actually hitting it off with Helga while she's pretending to be since pretending to be Cecile. Now, while on the other hand, Ruth is actually hanging off with the bus boy, the real bus boy at her restaurant. Uh, Arnold comes back uh, a bit later and he manages to sit down with Ruth for a bit and they just basically talk. Arnold tries to take advantage of the situation, trying to actually get to know Ruth as a person, but then he finds that Ruth really isn't that interesting. Okay, one of the premises of a first crush, especially in most cases where you have a crush on an older person, you naturally assume that because this person is older, they've got to be more mature, they've got to be more sophisticated. And remember, Arnold is nine years old, so it's a fair mistake. And Ruth is at least three years older than him. So it's only fair that he would make that kind of mistake. She's his upperclassman, she's older, so he would naturally assume that she's more mature. But no, that's not the case. Ruth goes in to explain about how her friend stole her hairdo when they were in the third grade, and Arnold is just not interested. He is he is just bored at his wits, and it's it's by this point that he does start to understand Ruth as a person, that she's not as interesting or as mature as he believed her to be. And that's kind of a sad reality when it comes to... And that's kind of a sad reality when it comes to your first crush. And Ruth is actually, strangely, an interesting character in this case. She's not good and she's not bad either. I mean, obviously, we're not supposed to like Ruth because of how she's showing her kind of bad, shallow side. But at the same time, we can't completely hate her either because she's completely unaware of the entire situation. I mean, I mean, she's 12 years old. What do you expect? Is she supposed to understand, hey, this kid who she has never interacted with one-on-one -on -one, has a crush on her, and she's supposed to read into that. No. And this is completely different. This is different from, say, a situation with uh, Timmy Turner and Trixie. Trixie is aware that Timmy has feelings for her, and she does uh, feed into him a bit. Who knows? She might even have a bit of closet feelings about that, but that's a discussion for another day. She is fully aware of it, and she does play on it a bit. While here, while here, Ruth is completely unaware that Arnold exists. She she thinks that he's a busboy. She thinks that he works there, despite the fact that he's younger than her. So, like I said, we can't hate her either. The only wrong thing that she is is that she's a bit unaware of the situation. So, yes, we don't like her, but at the same time, we can't hate her either. And this is kind of where our, I want to draw in a few things here. The entire time that Arnold has had a crush on Ruth all throughout Season 1... They have never interacted together, at the very least, not in person. Arnold sees Ruth in this, in this rose-tinted glasses. There's this romantic, sweet music playing in his head. He sees Ruth eyeing him and kind of giving a come hither, come hither look at him, almost like she's trying to entice him to approach her. But... All of this is just in Arnold's head. 
All of this is just how he perceives Ruth in his head. This, this probably isn't even how she is as a person. I mean, from what Arnold said, he saw her offer up her seat to an old woman who is struggling with a watermelon. So we know that she is capable of some form of, of being nice and compassion. At, but when it comes to this sort of thing, she's just not socially aware. So, so ironically, Ruth is an interesting person from this perspective. We don't like her, but at the same time, we don't hate her either. She's just kind of there. Anyway, eventually Arnold starts to realize that he was just attracted to Ruth because she was older, because he thought she was more mature, but he just comes to the conclusion it was just a crush. It was just a kid crush. As far as we know, Ruth was Arnold's first crush. He's nine years old, so it's a fair assumption. And he goes back to Cecile, and he prefers to be with her, but not before he tells Ruth, he tells Ruth that it's done, that he's just not interested in her. And Ruth, being admittedly kind of the ditz that she is, just doesn't figure it out. And she probably never will figure it out. She leaves to go with a party. She leaves with the busboy who served her to go to a party. And then later, um, Helga, pretending to be Cecile, pretending to be Cecile, does see Arnold talking with Ruth when he excuses himself, and rightfully she is a bit angry, but while she's going off on Arnold, the real Cecile uh, comes in later, and then Gerald uh, comes in to kind of save Arnold from the entire situation. And then it's just Arnold and Helga, but as far as Arnold is concerned, Helga is not is not Cecile, and he doesn't know who she is. It's possible Helga might have revealed this to Arnold a bit later, but at this point and all throughout the series, he's probably completely unaware. Um, he does have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart with Helga, pretending it's Cecile, that, that he comes to realize that Ruth wasn't the person he believed her to be. And Helga, as Cecile, does tell him that's not his fault, and maybe he's just looking in the wrong place. Um, before they part, Cecile Helga offers Arnold her shoe in a very Cinderella-esque way, and goes on to tell him that uh, goes on to tell him that the most beautiful presents are in the plainest of boxes. The very same quote that Miss Slovak gave her in class. And Helga, in a very melancholy way, just tells Arnold that she can't reveal who she really is. And the two part by saying that they very much enjoyed their night together, leaving this on a very, on a very blissful ending. Arnold, at this time completely unaware that it was Helga, his future girlfriend, at the series' conclusion in the Jungle movie, that he went on a date with her. And Helga... Now, uh, with newfound hope, the fact that the fact that Arnold does see her in a good light, but then comes to realize that it's her Cecile Helga persona that he sees, not Helga herself. So she has made some progress, and yet at the same time, not the progress the progress that she was hoping for. All right, that is Arnold's Valentine, and there is a lot to digest from this. It really does go in to say about how hard a first crush can be. And we always find an attraction, especially at that age, to somebody older. We naturally assume that because this person is older, they're more mature, they're more sophisticated. But when we come to actually know them, when we come to actually know them, we find that we might have just looked at the whole thing through rose-tinted glasses. That this person may or may not be everything we believe them to be. That was certainly the case between Arnold and Ruth. It's also worth noting that Ruth was only really featured in season one. When we move on to later seasons, she's kind of delegated to being a background character among a group of other characters. She doesn't really play a major role moving forward like she did in season one, where she was a part of major or minor plot points.
but what's interesting is that Ruth is always in the opening credits, even in later seasons among the group of girls who are marching to meet with the boy group. And it just kind of dawned on me why they never changed that. I guess they just didn't have the budget or want to change it. I don't know. Probably likely. But I digress. This episode goes in to emphasize about how a first crush works. Rose saw Ruth through rose-tinted glasses. He saw this idealized version of her that sadly didn't live up to his expectations. As far as we know, Ruth never even knew Arnold existed. Which is a bit cruel, but it's a bit on the nose, too. And Arnold doesn't wallow in it. He literally just accepts the loss that, hey, I guess I didn't know her the way I thought I did, and goes on back to his date with Helga Cecile. So, I do really appreciate this episode. This was Hey Arnold's only Valentine's Day special, and I doubt they could ever do a better one. Because it does go in to emphasize how a first crush works, and how even though this person you have feelings for didn't live up to your expectations, that doesn't mean that there isn't hope for you yet. Alright, I think I'll leave it about this. This is my first uh, podcast for the month of love. And I do hope that you guys enjoyed my little rant analysis. There's a lot more to come, so thank you very much for listening. There's plenty more on the way. Always remember to hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I do hope that you enjoyed your day. Take care, everybody.